heads back for one final season and no one knows who's going to end up on that iron chair or survive until the credits. Prepare yourself for the best games to play if you love Game of Thrones. The best fantasy show on TV is back for one final season and we're all donning our house colours and getting ready for war. Game of Thrones returns to screens this year, but what are you meant to play between episodes? What are you meant to do in that whole week gap between bloody battles, tales of treachery and dragon glass? Well, might we suggest not decapitating people? It doesn't really go down very well. Anyway, just a note from our little birds, we're not including Telltale's Game of Thrones game here because that's just cheating, and unlike our favourite Lannisters, we don't do that. However, there are some gentle spoilers ahead, so if you aren't up to date, maybe save this for once you've binged the previous box sets. From battle simulators to Borderlands, it's time for the best PC games to play if you love Game of Thrones. Come on, let's get this out of the way. You knew this was going to be here, we knew it was going to be here, it's best just to crack on with it. So yes, The Witcher 3 is an essential game to play for anyone who's read George R.R. R. Martin's books or watched HBO's series. It has similar scale and sweep, showing multiple sides of the same conquest. On the one hand, the ambition and power of the Nilfgaardian Emperor recalls Tywin Lannister, a similarity strengthened by the fact that they're both voiced by Charles Dance. I had forgotten how insolent you can be. On the other, the war-ravaged landscape feels like it's lifted right out of a storm of swords. The stark contrast, well, excuse the pun, of swooning opulence and desperate poverty is everywhere in The Witcher 3, so much so that it feels more like a Game of Thrones game than the real thing. And finally, you'd be hard pushed to find two creative endeavours with such a fanatic attention to detailed doublets. Verily I say unto you that ire and vehemence can lead to naught but one's downfall. Who the bloody hell is this? In many aspects, Dragon Age Inquisition paints a similar picture to The Witcher 3. Battle-scarred landscapes, factional politics and moral shades of grey. But its gamey throniness is amplified by two major factors. Firstly, as the title suggests, we've got dragons. Although they're perhaps not as crucial to the story as their top billing might imply, there are loads of them and they're great fun to fight. And secondly, we've got thrones, an entire furniture warehouse of thrones in fact. As the Inquisitor, you get to sit in your lofty skyhold hall and pass judgement on the poor wretches who are brought before you. It's a fantastic touch, one which really makes you feel like you have influence in the world. And for all you interior design enthusiasts out there, you can even customise your seat of literal power so it feels more you. It's like Instagram with capital punishment. Just when you thought our pics couldn't get any more grimy, mud-caked and grim, along comes Hungry Henry and the fabulously unpolished Kingdom Come Deliverance. It says loads about George R.R. R. Martin's world-building that a game with a basis in reality so closely reflects the landscape of his novels. Kingdom Come is a clanking, rusty, rugged representation of medieval life that can't really be called fantasy. And it's precisely this realism that makes the game feel like a snapshot of the brutish and short lives in Game of Thrones. For once, it's nice to feel like a humble foot soldier, flawed, flimsy and, at the start, quite feeble. Not all games are brave enough to give us swords and armour without adding magic and mystery, but Kingdom Come does and it's all the better for it. Because who needs dragons and white walkers when you've got a lovely, cheerful lad like our Henry? What have you done? Did you kill him? Me? What do you mean? Me. It was you. You killed him. I didn't kill anyone. The corpse was already lying there when I got here. One word, dragons. Such dragons. Divinity Dragon Commander is every Targaryen's dream. This sprawling RTS is all about conquering the world with flaming sky lizards, and it's not all just from that distant top-down view. Zoom in for what's called dragon combat, yes, imaginatively titled, and you can be part of the roasting, toasting, attacking force as enemy troops melt in flames beneath you. What a win you scored, Commander. Wish I were a dragon sometimes, to burn and battle like you. 
The mashup of Burning Sky Combat and Serious RTS works surprisingly well. And like the taking of Westeros, this isn't an easy ride. Strategy is truly the name of the game, and even with scaly murderers on your side, as we've learned in Thrones, victory isn't always guaranteed. Oh, and decisions as an emperor really aren't easy either, making it look even less attractive to sit on that spiky throne than ever before. Isn't there anywhere that's safe around here? Is High Garden free? Your enthusiasm is admirable, Commander, but I fear it is rather misplaced. Actually, grossly misplaced is the proper term. No, it's not the first game you think of when you think about Game of Thrones, but it turns out that Borderlands 2's D&D DLC, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, doesn't just have dragons and a distinctly King's Landing style castle. Nope, the gang's role-playing holiday from the wasteland has its very own Game of Thrones-inspired side quest where you get to, well, repeatedly slap Joffrey. How dare you! No one slaps the prince! The prince may do as he likes! Okay, he's Joffrey here, but this arrogant princeling can be found heavily guarded in a very familiar-looking throne room. And, of course, in true Borderlands style, the chair in question isn't made from swords, but guns. Ooh, loot in furniture form. Back to Joffrey though, wait, Jeffrey. And there's seriously good fun to be found in slapping the little idiot relentlessly after melting down his guards. On the basis that they don't kill kids, the crew leave him be, but there's a brilliant discussion about the differences between the books and the show. I only saw the Echo show and they ain't even done with the second book yet. Uh, you haven't read the books? They're so good! Really? I heard they get kind of butt. Regardless, the Borderlands violence here for once doesn't just involve endless bullets, and it's glorious. Oh, just want more gold. My mother and uncle are just good friends, that's all! Winter is coming? No, winter is here, and in the long dark, it's seriously cold. Sure, there aren't any White Walkers, and no, no one is stabbing anyone in the back, but this is a survival sim worthy of any good Stark. Not to mention, very good practice for going beyond the wall. This is a survival map so good that you want to wrap yourself in furs to play it. You are constantly on the edge of death, desperately making fires, eating any food you can find, and attempting to repair clothing to keep yourself warm. Plus, in true Game of Thrones style, there are even wolves to contend with. These aren't your friendly Stark direwolves though, or if they are, they definitely belong to someone else, as these four-legged toothy monsters are looking to make you their next happy meal. Or, you know, really, really sad meal. You're not in King's Landing now, you know. be forgiven for thinking that Neptune's Pride is an odd fit for a list about a high fantasy series, not least because it's set in space and has precisely nothing to do with dragons. But no game better captures the grasping, scheming, getting up at 3am to betray your allies backstabbery of Game of Thrones. It's like the Red Wedding the game. This multiplayer strategy game should come with a warning label. Yes, it all seems like cheerful empire building fun when you first start out, but soon you'll be forging alliances with your buddies just so you can betray them later on, and picking on your weakest friends like a tiger hunting sickly gazelle. And because everything happens in real time, ships sometimes take days to arrive at their destinations, you'll also have plenty of time to plot your ultimate acts of revenge. Cersei Lannister would be proud. Game of Thrones is all about great dynasties, clashing armoured heads, and quite often trying to wipe each other out. Crusader Kings 2 captures these elements wonderfully, with nuanced diplomacy and a laser focus on protecting your family name. In that respect, and many others, it's like a Tywin Lannister simulator. The only thing that matters is the success of your house. And the game lets you employ a range of nefarious methods to make this happen. Dodgy marriages, assassination and good old-fashioned war are all tools you can use to cement your position as a medieval superpower. And if that's not enough, there's a hugely detailed Game of Thrones mod that recreates all of Westeros and its ancient warring families. 
Game of Thrones makes a lot of the looming, icy threat of the White Walkers. Winter has been coming for quite some time, and now it's well and truly here, we hope to pack mittens and dragonglass. And that's exactly why Total War Warhammer is a good fit for Thrones fans. Instead of blue-eyed whites, the persistent threat here is chaos, and the impending arrival of Archeon Everchosen. And like Game of Thrones, the chaos incursion is made more dangerous because of the infighting factions of the old world. It's far easier for your forces to get steamrollered by chaos if you've only just finished repelling the vampire counts. And while the border princes are never going to crush the empire, they're distracting enough that you might miss the dragon ogre Shagoth that's about to sack your capital. It's a more obvious fantasy setting than Thrones, with its orcs and dwarves and rampaging beastmen, but Creative Assembly have done such a stellar job of bringing the Warhammer lore to life that the races feel as relatable and real as anything in George R.R. R. Martin's epic. Of course Skyrim's here, right at the end of our list, just to give you that surprise twist, like all the best Thrones episodes. Although, that would be more like taking our favourite games and squeezing their heads until they burst like melons. So, uh, moving on. Elder Scrolls V is like a Game of Thrones to-do list. Dragons? Check. Snowy expanses full of wild monsters? Also check. Whether you've investigated the mods that can transform your game with the armour and locations of Westeros or not, this is the perfect RPG for any aspiring Stark, Lannister or Baratheon. Hunting, mead, extreme violence and spells worthy of the treacherous Melisandre herself. It's all here. And unlike every other game on this list, Skyrim is available in VR to make you feel like you're truly living Game of Thrones. Also, while we're here, hit the link on screen now to check out the places that you should visit in VR Skyrim, even when you don't want to feel like a Targaryen. I know your kind, always sneaking about. Well, that's it. Play all of these games and you'll feel like winter is truly here. Let us know your favourite titles that get you in that Game of Thrones mindset in the comments below. Drop us a like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to Logitech G for more features just like this one. If you do already subscribe, ring that shame, wait, notification bell so that you know exactly when our next video lands.